U.S. History Orientation for Mrs. Hutchins classes. This is a brief overview of the information that is in your course content outline that is um, in Canvas. Please make sure that you read the course content that is posted in Canvas because it has more detailed information. This is only a brief overview of that information. The attendance policy for this course is established by the rules and guidelines in the student handbook for Vernon College. Just briefly, what you need to understand that attendance in online classes actually means more than just signing into the course. You must actually participate in the course. That means turning in assignments, taking quizzes, taking tests. Just signing in is not participation. If you do not sign in and participate, you will be reported to the registrar's office and financial aid as non-attending. This could affect your ability to receive financial aid in the future if you are a financial aid student. Also, students who do not participate in an online course um, can be dropped, just like students who do not come to class in a face-to-face -face course. So if you are in an online class, please make sure that you are participating. Each missed assignment will count as an absence. So you can quickly add up a bunch of absences in an online class, uh, just like you can if you don't attend into a face-to-face -face class. If you are in the online class, you should sign into Canvas to review your course materials and assignments at least twice a week. If you are in the face-to-face -face class or the team section, you should also sign into Canvas to review your course materials. All of your assignments will also be in Canvas, so you need to have a Canvas presence and not just attend the team sessions or, or just come to the face-to-face -face class. Keys to Success in History Courses. All students, whether online, face-to-face, -face, or team students, should review their uh, Canvas course at least twice a week. That makes sure that you're uh, keeping up with all assignments. If there are any updates, I post announcements there to remind you about assignments. Or if we have to um, miss class for some reason, like a snow day or something, I will post an announcement in Canvas. So make sure that you are accessing Canvas often, but at least twice a week. All of your course study materials are posted in Canvas. Whether you're in online, face-to-face, -face, or team section, all of your study materials are there. Um, you will have in Canvas a chapter outline uh, that includes objectives. These are published by the book author. And so this is a good way for you to keep up with what the objectives of the chapter are. Then there are PowerPoints and lecture notes that I have created for you. These PowerPoints and lecture notes are based on the lectures that I give. This is what I consider the major information in the court in the in that chapter. Some of the information in the PowerPoints will not be in your book. So make sure that you are accessing the PowerPoints and the lecture videos and not just reading your book, because this, uh, especially your discussion questions on your test, will often come from the lecture note videos. The lecture note videos are the same videos that I give in my face-to-face -face class. I make these accessible to my online students, and I also post them in the team section and the face-to-face -face class for students who have to miss class from time to time. So you have PowerPoints and lecture note videos that are created by your instructor, and these are very important learning materials. The book author also selects certain major topics within the chapter, and he has done some office hour videos. These are um, very in-depth, and they are usually very interesting for students because you get to hear a um, professional historian, an author, uh, give their particular slant about a history uh, topic. So these can also be very beneficial. As you're reviewing and preparing for your chapter review quizzes and for your module tests, I also highly encourage you to use the flashcards that are available uh, to review material within the chapter. 
all of these materials are here to help you focus on the textbook reading um, to help you do better on the module test because history chapters tend to be quite long so this is a way for you to break the chapter up into uh, smaller sections and to focus on what the author of the book as well as your uh, professor me uh, considers to be the major aspects of the uh, chapter another a key to success for my online students particularly is to treat this course as if it were a face-to-face -face course if you're in the face-to-face -face section you know what days and times you have to come to class if you're in the team section you also know what days and times you have to sign in but sometimes in online classes we procrastinate and we don't uh, access our course as often as we should but the really the good key the best key for success in an online class is to treat it like it's a face-to-face -face section schedule a time at your convenience around your job around your family obligations uh, schedule a time uh, at least two or three times a week where you will access the history course treat it like you are coming to class this is you will establish a pattern here and you'll know oh i need to access my history class at five o'clock on thursday afternoons whatever time works for you that's why the online is good for some people especially who work uh, because they can schedule it at two o'clock in the morning or at you know six o'clock in the morning or whenever it is convenient but you do need to schedule a time at least two or three times a week and adhere to that schedule treat this class just like you were coming into the college for your class or treat the class like you were signing into this team section now i want to briefly remind you of some of the course content you will see all of this in canvas when you sign in when you um, look at the modules every module has chapter review quizzes these are timed so you need to make sure that you have read the chapter before opening opening those chapter review quizzes you usually have 30 minutes to complete the chapter review quizzes these are designed to review the major points of the chapter and they um, it will tell you if you get an answer wrong and it will tell you where in the book to go look the answer up so you can have a better understanding of it before you take the module test inquisitive assignments are also assigned for each chapter that we will be covering the inquisitive is an interactive learning tool that's in a game-like atmosphere where you kind of wager points if you think you know it you can wager more points if you don't think you know it you should wager fewer points because your grade is based on how many points you receive uh, on that assignment most of them around 1500 points is will give you full credit for the assignment which is 10 points so the good thing about inquisitive is you can keep playing for more and more points until you reach that thres threshold where you can get full credit for the assignment these um i get really good feedback from students on them because they like to play the game they like to wager the points and they like the fact that they can keep playing on and on until they get uh, full credit for the assignment they as i said they cover only we only do inquisitives for the chapters that we're covering in the book but you do have to purchase inquisitive uh, once you purchase it for the history 1301 class the um, the code is also good for history 1302 so you only have to purchase it once a year it will cover both sections of 1301 and 1302 uh, inquisitive is only required for the 16 week courses so whether you're in online teams or face to face you will have inquisitive and inquisitive counts 10 percent of your course grade if you are in the eight week course or if you are in a summer course which is about five weeks you do not have to do inquisitive we just don't have enough time in the shorter courses to do the chapter reviews and the inquisitives also included of course in each um, chapter in each module will be your module test your module test covers all of the chapters in that module most modules cover three to 
to maybe four chapters. Uh, in 1301, there are a couple of modules that only have two chapters, but they're usually longer chapters. But you will have multiple chapters, two, three, or sometimes four chapters in a module, and the module test will cover all of those chapters. You will also have a discussion forum. The discussion forum, um, I will post a topic for discussion for each module. You will answer that topic question by the guidelines. All of this is, all the guidelines are spelled out in Canvas. And then you will reply to one of your classmates very cordially, politely. Um, you will reply to one of your classmates' postings. The discussion forums are extra credit. They are 10 points per module. So you have an opportunity to gain uh, 40 extra credit points in the class. I add the discussion points to each module test. So on the first module test, say you made an 80 and you got 9 out of 10 on your discussion, then that will bump your grade up to an 89. The discussion forums are the only extra credit for the class. So don't come to me the end of the semester and say, oh, I need some extra credit. Those 40 points, that's a lot of points when you can get 10 points added to each test. Uh, those 40 points are the only extra credit that is available in the class. From time to time, if I find that students are not getting the material, I will also post other assignments possibly in the module just to try to help you gain more insight into the material that's being um, uh, covered. But you will always have to have to review quizzes. You will always have inquisitive, unless you're in the short courses, and you will always have a module test, and then you have the opportunity to do the discussion forum. Additionally, for this class, we are having a research project. I have created a semester-long research project that is divided into six assignments. Um, if you've taken my class in the past, this is replacing the research essay that you used to do. Uh, so the first assignment is topic selection, and you will do an assignment, and there's much more information on topic selection and all of this research project in Canvas. There is an assignment on each one of these. But on your topic selection, I will provide a list. Your topic must come from that list and you will write up uh, the assignment based on the criteria there, why you selected the topic, what you currently know about it, what you hope to learn about it. Then a little, a few weeks later, we'll start the actual research. And there are three types of um, research that are most commonly used in history. And the first is scholarly books, and then peer-reviewed journal articles, and then primary sources. And so there is an assignment on each one of these. Now, a scholarly book is much different than the types of books that you're mostly used to dealing with. And so there's a definition of what a scholarly book is, how to identify a scholarly book, where to go to find scholarly books. All of that is included in Canvas. And then I do the same thing for the peer-reviewed journal articles and for the uh, primary sources. So you will have an assignment on scholarly book. You'll have a third assignment on um, peer-reviewed journal articles. And then your fourth assignment will be on primary sources. So you will do that assignment. Then the topic selection, of course, was assignment one. So then after we have compiled our knowledge about research, then we are going to create an annotated bibliography on that topic and you'll compile the information based on what I have a, a, a very detailed outline in canvas that will tell you about the annotated bibliography and you'll take the work that you've done in that research the work that you've done on your topic selection and you will uh, compile the annotated bibliography that is the fifth assignment then the sixth assignment is you will do an additional discussion post. Now, the research project discussion post is not, not 
extra credit. It is mandatory. And it counts a little more than the other, um, the extra credit discussion posts. And so there will be information about that. So this research project is designed to help students learn about academic research, not just searching the internet, not just putting something in Google and getting all types of incorrect information. It's designed to truly give you um, the tools you need to do academic accurate research. Just some final notes, important rules for your assignments and tests. The Canvas calendar is the official calendar for the course. It has all the due dates. Uh, I do put assignment dates in the course outline, but from time to time we have to change those. So the Canvas calendar is the official calendar for the course with all the due dates. Deadlines are deadlines. I do not accept late work. Don't start sending me emails or calling. I do not accept late work. All assignments must be submitted in Canvas as a Word document, and they are checked through a plagiarism checker. Uh, Word documents are the only format for assignments. Now this, this is what you need to look at when you're looking at the research project. Um, your chapter review quizzes and your inquisitive or just to submit, you don't have to attach anything. But when you start the research project, you're going to have those assignments. They have to be in Word document. I cannot open Google Docs. I know a lot of you have the Google Chromebooks. But all you have to do in the Google Chromebook is go to Save As, and it will give you the opportunity to save it as a Word document. I can't open Google Docs. It's not that I'm being hard or mean, but the college um, does not have that uh, ability on our, our computers at the college. Uh, a big one that always comes up is all makeup tests must be taken within three days of the original test deadline. If you miss a test for any reason, you have to contact me. I don't always approve a makeup test, but if I do, I will uh, set the deadline for you and it has to be done within three days of the original test deadline. So you need to make sure that you contact me very quickly. Um, all makeup tests, will have a 15 point per day reduction in points for late submission. That is the reason I only do three days because after three days, you've, you've already missed 45 points. So you're starting at a 55, you're starting at an F. So don't miss a test. Tests you will usually have four to five days. Uh, at least the test will be open four to five days. So you can take the test early you don't have to take it on the due date, but when the test closes at 11.59 p.m. on that due date, it's closed and you won't be able to access it again until you contact me. And if I approve it, I will reopen it for you, but you will have a 15 point per day reduction in points for late submission. After three days, I will not reopen it because you're already deep in the hole on the test at that point. And so don't wait till, I mean, I've had students come up and miss module one test and want to take a makeup test on module one at the end of the semester. There's, you owe me points at that stage. So make sure that's the big one. Also, if I do approve a makeup test, I may change the test from the test that all of your other classmates took. So makeup tests are not always the same as everyone else's. The big rule for tests is don't miss them. That's the big one. Don't miss it. Please contact me with any questions or concerns that you may have about the class or any information that you don't understand um, once we get into assignments or even if it's a question about content in the chapter, if you don't understand it, I'm here to assist you. I, I love history, but I know a lot of students don't love history, but I've spent the better part of my life studying history. So I can probably give you some insight into information that you can't get or may not be in the book. So contact me if you have any questions or if you don't understand an assignment, send me an email, give me a call. I'm here to assist you. Uh, my office hours are posted in your course outline and on the homepage in Canvas. Um, 
Email is really the best way to contact me because I teach a lot of uh, online classes and Teams classes, so I'm not always in my office at the college to answer the phone. But if you call the office, uh, leave a message, and I will get back to you the next day. I will respond to all emails within 24 hours, if not sooner, but at least within 24 hours, except on the weekends. If you contact me on the weekend, it may be the following Monday before I respond back to you. My email address is there on the bottom slide, as uh, well as my uh, Vernon College office number. Just please make sure I'm here to assist you. Call me, email me if you have any questions or concerns. Just one last note, uh, remember that I'm here to help you. My goal is for all of my students to always pass. That doesn't mean I'm easy, but I'm here to help you if you help yourself. Uh, it's history, so really you should be able to pass as long as you are dedicated and get your assignments in. Remember, history is a guide to navigate in perilous times. History is who we are and why we are the way we are. And I think in the day and age that we are in right now, we are in some kind of perilous times and there's a lot that we can learn from history. So uh, good luck in the course. I hope to hear from all of you. And if you have any questions, remember, give me a call.